Talk Shoes. Recorded live. Hello, everybody. This is Penny Haynes with the Commercial Creation Center, and you're joining us on the Marketing with Audio and Video Talk Shoe Show. I appreciate you joining us, those of you who are here live in the chat room and also on the call, and for those of you who are listening later. And we'll talk about this a little bit more, but some of you may be tuning in just to the clips that I put. I create audio clips and a video clip from the show afterwards so people can get a taste of what the show is like and then if they want to, listen to the whole thing. And I do that in order to increase search engine rankings for myself, for the Marketing with Audio and Video show, and the Commercial Creation Center. And today, our show is specifically about how to use your audio and video to increase your search engine rankings. And I was going to talk about this at some point, but what really brought this on is I went to LinkedIn, and LinkedIn has a very interesting ability, and that is to be able to ask people other questions and have them answer. The last time I asked a question was about social networking and social media sites, which is what our last show is about. This time I asked people how can you use or how have you used audio and video in order to increase your search engine rankings? I only had one person who responded. Well, actually I had three people respond. One said, I don't think you can do it. Uh, the second one said he uses Traffic Geyser, and we'll talk about that. And the third person said that she had the capabilities of creating video and putting it on her site, but she hadn't done it yet. So I have a feeling this is one of those things people don't fully understand that they can the way Google ranks your website is based on several things. And I'm going to go ahead and type something into the chat here. The first thing is that, that I want to talk about is having links back to your site. Okay? Now, they always call this, well, links, incoming links and outgoing links. Whenever you put a link on your website or a post in a blog or a post on a podcast or a social media post, you're linking out to someone else, and this is good for them. However, when other people are linking back to your site, these are inbound links. And if you don't have a link back to their site, then it's even better. It means people are referring you without reciprocity. Does that make sense? So that's why it's very important for you to have links coming back and pointing to your website. Now I'm going to tell you a trick right now that most people don't do, and it's the simplest thing in the world if you have a blog or a podcast or any social media or social networking sites. People need to put a link back to their website in every post, every blog post. What you want to do is you want to put your name and if you, oops, I'm sorry, and if you have a website that's based on your name, like I have pennyhaines.com, what I do at the bottom of all of my blog posts and most of my podcast posts is that I will put Penny Haynes and link it to pennyhaines.com and then Commercial Creation Center and link that to commercialcreationcenter.com. Now you'd say, well, what if it's already on the commercialcreationcenter.com site? That doesn't matter, and I'll tell you why. Whenever you're putting a link on an RSS feed, which is what a blog or a podcast is, whenever you do that and then you syndicate your RSS feed. Now, does anybody know what syndicate means? Mm -hmm. Tell me what it means, anybody. Well, the, the, I was thinking about the RSS if people want to subscribe to your feeds. Okay, people can subscribe to it, but syndication does one other thing. So I'm going to write down syndication. Other people can subscribe, which means they can pull it into their RSS reader or their podcatcher, or they might even be able to put it on their own website. But the other thing is, is that you can submit your RSS feed to RSS-based directories. Now, has anybody here taken the link from your blog or your podcast and submitted it to Podcast Pickle, which is a podcast directory, or Podcast Alley, or anything like that? Other sites that will repost your blog and your podcast. Anyone? Has anyone done that? No, just iTunes. 
just iTunes. Oh, I'm so glad you When you submit an RSS feed to iTunes, it doesn't do anything for you in the search engine rankings. And I'll tell you why. iTunes is membership-based only. So Google can't get in there because it's not a member of iTunes. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. Now, only public directories are open to Google. So you being on iTunes is great because I think something like 70% of people who download podcasts download from iTunes but it doesn't help your search engine rankings at all. It's what I call a walled garden, the same way people talk about Facebook being a walled garden. In other words, what's inside Facebook, nobody can see unless they log into Facebook. It's the same way with iTunes. So imagine, let's forget about iTunes for a second, and let's say there are 10 podcast directories. Let's say your podcast has to do with business. You can, subs- you can submit it to the business resources podcast directory, small business podcast directory, uh, the family-friendly podcast directory, podcast pickle, uh, podcast alley, um, audio, uh, all these different, different podcast directories. There are also RSS directories that you can submit them to. Now, why is this important? Because when you submit your podcast or your blog to another directory, they reprint it. It's just like you having a column in a newspaper and you syndicate it and all of a sudden you put one post up and it is in every newspaper in the United States. Wouldn't that be great if every time you posted something it was in every newspaper? That would be cool. Well, that's exactly what happens when you take your RSS feed and you submit it to these RSS-based directories. There are blog directories, RSS directories, and podcast directories. And if you have an RSS feed, but you are not submitting it to these directories, it's like the tree in the forest. If a tree falls in a forest and no one's there, does it make a sound? Well, if you have a podcast and nobody can find it on Google, does it exist? So do you get my idea here? Yep. So it's very important that if you have a WordPress blog or any or your RSS feed, you need to put it out there so that every time you post, it shows up on all these other sites, which is very, very good. I'm going to stop the clips here. If you would like to find out the rest of the ways that you can increase your search engine rankings, you can access the entire audio for free, the entire class. You'll find out two more tips about how the Google search engine robots give you brownie points to increase your search engine rankings. You'll also find about two other services that increase your visibility. You post or you upload to these sites once and it then posts and upload to several different sites giving you massive exposure instead of having to go to all of these sites individually to do it. So you can go to marketingwithaudioandvideo.com to get the link to the full audio or you can go to talkshoe.com and search for marketing with audio and video. And all of this has been brought to you by the Commercial Creation Center. You can really increase your search engine rankings if you're uploading audio and video, but most people don't know how to do it. They're scared of it. They think it's going to be too hard or too expensive. The Commercial Creation Center takes care of both of those issues. Very inexpensive, very easy to use, and comes with help from me on a continual basis. So please go to CommercialCreationCenter.com and download the software and try it out for free. I'd love to have you with me and be able to help you promote your business, and increase your online visibility and your search engine rankings by using audio and video. This is Penny Haynes, signing off for marketingwithaudioandvideo.com.